All right. So today we are working on beasties, creatures. My bread and butter in Pathfinder 1e and 2e. So, as you might be able to already see here, we're working on an aberration. We're going to be working on a lot of aberrations. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <coughs> Draxus has been redeemed. All right. I hope my throat can handle this right now. <laughs> Actually, I think I need a drink. I'll be right back. <laughs> It took me a second to get back into it, but... Well, well, well. Today we are making creatures. Uh, Sorry, it's been so long since I've done them. Today we are making creatures. Working on aberrations to begin with. And... Currently, I have a concept for something based somewhat on an SCP inspired by you don't see the bodies in the water. <laughs> this is going to be a very... Th Thank you, Tracy. This is going to be a very hazardous sort of creature. It's going to be a little odd. Aggressive, but slow. Dangerous, but deadly. Drawing you in. And... Uh, I think the most basic form of this creature, the one that will likely be submitted for the purposes of production and publishing, will be uh, Eat today. Of course, there's no more alignment, so we ignore that. Creature and let's see, should there be anything else here? It's not a mental effect in of itself, so no mental tag. Don't suppose that it's astral, it's simply from the deep reaches of some, some horrible place. Much like, much like the, the old ones. So, I think we leave out the additional traits. Let's see here. and we define what that is. This is in general. Uh, 
has no action. It is a mental effect. Infectious mind. I love you too, Tracy. Silly names for it. But I didn't want it to be a silly name. Let's see. No. Stay Form. No, bottom figure. Yes, that's much better. Bottom figure. Lots of figure. Language they do not communicate in a physical manner. So, I cannot speak any language. Infectious mind and telepathy for 100 feet. Should 
there. Alright. So we have our first ability before we've even set any of our modifiers. These things are not terribly dexterous, this flow. Incredibly, though so not that bad. Right. Do a one dexterity, horrible, horrible dexterity. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop the voice there. So, um, thing is, it's probably gonna have pretty decent strength. This thing sort of like floats through the air and kind of slightly incapacitates you as it slowly approaches. completely wax your butt when it gets close incidentally which is something I'll get into in another ability later as they they don't actively move around and seem to act oh it's ad time Time for ads. should be done in about 30 seconds. about these things is that they are going to sort of like float around and not seem at least to actively move it very much seems like a, a body floating along either in water or through the air uh, but that doesn't mean it don't hurt when they they, they bump into you have a 
fairly high strength. Constitution. I don't think they're terribly intelligent. They're sort of a hunter. Uh, their perception, their wisdom should be pretty, pretty good. We'll give it a five for wisdom. Not fifty-four. Five. They really just got no riz whatsoever. Um, but they don't pop either. So, let's see there. AC is probably low. So we got 24. Although I am below average threshold for that as well. So we'll just arbitrate at the 24. Uh, calculator, come here. Oh, apparently I do have uh, one of the bots that the time. Uh, and that's, that's my uh, go by there in chat, <laughs> if anyone's interested. Uh, but for right now, I am doing some math. We got a 24. Let's see. Eight plus four. And then it assumes another two. Because of the hidden level, hidden levels. But fun fact for those of you that um, that might do creature design, there are some of the statistics that are easier to, if you want to do hand calculations instead of just going off of the the pre-assigned values. Um, you just treat the creature as if it were uh, two levels higher. And it's because they're actually still using, for a lot of things, they're using math similar to a player character, but they're two levels behind. Uh, or two levels ahead, rather. Like a level zero and, or a level negative one creature should have some statistical relation to a level one character and a level two to a level four character etc although it especially in the lowest of levels negative one and zero it doesn't always quite add up but they use a similar sort of precedent uh, for certain pieces of the math and there's certain ones that don't apply because but i can't remember them off the top of my head there's some where the math doesn't add up there and you use the actual level of the creature. But 99% of the time, it's fine. It's perfectly good to just use the provided values on the tables or here in Monster Tool. They're just given their, their things and then it makes you your suggestion. Uh, while there is no express reason in 2e to be like oh i'm gonna match up these stats to absolutely everything else throughout the sheet you can uh you can create cohesive uh thematics between uh the stats so your attributes and your um excuse me and your other uh statistics you can create a solid interconnected through line you don't have to uh, and the you don't have to can make for some more interesting creatures but if you are trying to keep things thematic you can generally uh, make your math 
a little more like nice for the scratching of the back of your brain uh by so safe i have a uh, moderate fortitude right because i have a moderate constitution if i make my constitution three i should make my fortitude uh 15 instead of 16 or if i do bump to high because oh it's a it's a master at that um it would be 18 instead of 19 here but i am going with four so we're gonna go with a high there we're gonna have a pretty bad reflex save i don't have anything to sort of save it from aoe's so i'm not gonna go to terrible i'm gonna say it has high proficiency basically just bad stat uh but low is okay low is an odd number so we are fine there uh and we might lower this later when we think about it some more but for right now we're good so our will save is going to be moderate it's not as good at those but we do have a bump to our wisdom so that's going up to 17. hit points uh for now we'll be leaving it at moderate and resume eight slightly higher than average slightly higher than moderate slightly lower than high uh, and this is something that you'll see be sort of the least I guess figure outable number on an entire monster sheet is where to put the hit points a lot of times uh, like I said you can do math uh, related to the creatures uh statistics and level if you want just to sort of ballpark things you don't have to um you can just look at these and go oh, i want it to have high hit points i want it to have moderate hit points uh, i want it somewhere in the middle um and there are guides on yes aberration uh hello the household uh, how are you doing? Uh, yep, we're working on an aberration for uh, Eldritch Osiris Games. Uh, it's based loosely on the concept of uh, the uh, You Do Not See the Bodies in the Water SCP, uh, except it's more of a entity instead of a uh, cognito hazard, although it is cognito hazardous. dark vision in there i did originally conceive this with a special sort of sense where it doesn't see or hear but it links into the minds of creatures near it to see and hear so the more things are around it the more it senses but the more i thought about that the more complicated and probably annoying for the gm it got ah leaf yeah. Hello, hats. How are you doing? It's been a while. Uh, 
I, w I was being Taraxxus earlier because Tracy redeemed my Taraxxus voice. Uh, yeah, uh, I've, I've had it for a long time. I have not used it for a long time, uh, but I decided to start getting back into streaming mostly as a form of body doubling and to keep me on track for projects that have been for one reason or another put off for too long. And this is basically letting me force myself in little order bursts uh, to work. And working pretty well so far this is day three i'm keeping it mixed up every day is a different thing i will eventually cycle around yeah it is a good uh i actually get that reference it is a good rubber duck uh i may not be a coder but in ways there is some familiarity to coding and uh to be design uh because there can be i guess logic gates for a few things uh, but yeah, uh, the other day I was working on making a pit fiend ancestry, uh, for a commission, and I got some ideas bounced off the chat. Yeah, that's fair. It's good to hear that, uh, you're doing well. Uh, things have been getting better here. They've been pretty rough for a while. But they're, they're getting a little better. Okay. Go okay. oh, weakness to mental damage. Okay. It already does the weakness part. Mental. Speed. And Resistance. Its body is basically just a body. It's dulled to pain. It's a goal five. Except, what's the? Yeah, I, I miss everyone too. Things have just sort of gotten out of hand like that's part of the reason i'm doing this is because like technically there is time for things but i'm very bad at assigning that time to things this helps force me to do that force force me to do that i can english um yeah i miss playing with everybody and running games and stuff in a while. Appreciate it. Uh, did you ever get into 2E or is it still not your jam? At first, I wasn't 
like keen on the idea of 2e uh until i started designing for it and then i i started seeing some of the the nice the niceties of the system not not least of all because it i could make a monster much faster um uh which to anyone who is in chat or uh is watching this later that doesn't know i i've been designing for the system since before i played it uh my very first thing that i did was design a monster for a competition because i was like i'm good at monsters i can figure this out i need the money <laughs> uh and and i did get a, a gold medal and made a hundred bucks off of that uh which was nice uh, uh, spoiler source category. Sources. Or GM. One of these. Uh, this is for uh, a splat book uh, that uh, Ultra Cyrus Games is working on. Um, I was tasked with creating some creatures. And so that's what I'm working on here. Uh, but day by day, my projects and sources of those projects change. Like uh, two days ago, I was working on a Pit Fiend Ancestry that's just for an individual commission. Uh, yesterday, I was working on layout for uh, the Sinclair's Codec, uh, and collating what information I can for that for now. Uh, today, I'm working on EOG. Tomorrow, I'll probably just work on something. Oh, ads. <laughs> I will finish answering when the ads are done. <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to have my answer not heard properly. Uh, ads. And yes, I know ads suck, but if I make six cents a stream, that's something. <laughs> One more minute. Uh, meanwhile, I can be doing my research, silly me. Uh, which one is it? Oh, do we not have the other star medals yet? I mean, I could do or Calcum, but a level eight creature, a level seventeen material. Mm. Okay, I'll keep it simple for now. Straight physical five. Okay. The the ads should be over now. So uh yeah, I uh I get commissions every once in a while. They're pretty rare, but uh I do enjoy uh the opportunity. Uh and so like that's what I was working on two days ago. Yesterday I was working on uh Sinclair's Codex. Uh today I'm working on this creature for a future book of EOG. Uh which will likely go through multiple additional stages of tweaks and edits. Uh even after it's done here. And 
and uh, tomorrow I'm probably just gonna do something like just a personal project, something to put on my Patreon, uh, which everything on my pay on my uh, thing is free. Uh, if you want to go look at some of the creatures I've made that I put on there for free, because like I was having fun with like making Castlevania creatures and Pokemon and and stuff like that into things you could use. Uh, and I'll just cycle through day by day. I'll probably take a day or two off from streaming a week. I'm not 100% sure on my finalized schedule yet. Mondays and Tuesdays I'll I normally have off from actual work and will probably uh, stream a bit later on those days. Hmm. Oh, putting my head back on the track. Um, okay, so we got our stats here. Um, which, uh, hats, if you do ever get into Dewey and want to get into designing things, it's, uh, actually got quite a lot of guidance. Um, and there are these, uh, the pf2.tools, um, make some of it a little easier, uh, in terms of formatting. So we get this nice formatted thing that helps guide us through the creation process. A lot of times I still just do it on a dock, but here I can do it in a way that looks a little nicer and then copy things over and redo the formatting myself uh, for actual submission. Let's see. Going to be plus 17 in perception. Yeah, it, it's really useful. Um, there's uh, there's also um, Scribe, which has its issues with the server being down sometimes, but Scribe's really good for uh, formatting larger documents and making it look very in line with PF2E's formatting. I also use Affinity uh, to actually do layout and make uh, PDFs and stuff. Uh, I, I made a, I made a one-page RPG last year, I think, uh, and that was a pretty good exercise. I enjoyed. It, it's not nearly the complexities of creating a whole new, proper, full-blown system, but it was an enjoyable challenge to think up a new mechanics and a way to balance them. And to get it all to fit on one page. <laughs> Let's see. Flies. So it needs acrobatics, but it's flight is red. So looking at our base 13 that we're sort of working with before. Math-wise, it should be 11, but... Yeah, I like pulling stuff from video games, too. Uh, I always see things and think that would make a neat mechanic. Of course, I'm usually looking at it from the lens of, ooh, I can do that in 2E. Um, just because it's my system of preference, and I like designing for it. Uh, but it's really fun to explore. Uh, not too long ago, I actually did some, some work for 5e, which not my system of choice, I'm sure you know, but, uh, I found out that it's, uh, great. Uh, the rules and guidelines for creating creatures are significantly more in depth than I thought. 
not necessarily that they're the most uh, balanced thing in the world still, but they're, there's a lot of guidelines to them that I think probably when people are homebrewing kind of get left in the wayside, and that might be part of the reason it's so easy to unbalance, too. Uh, especially MOBAs that have been running for so long, there's so much design space, so they're excellent case study for making similar mechanics feel distinct. Yeah, like, uh, one of the, one of the things that I like, uh, here in 2E is that you can pretty easily sort of take something that already exists or take an idea and make it work, uh, with tweaks and with changes because, uh, the balance part in terms of numerical balance is easy. It's laid out for you pretty, pretty simply. And there are a few outliers here and there, but 90% of the time you're good. Like you don't have to think too hard about that outside of, do I want this to be low? Do I want this to be high? You know, this can't be a, a Mary Sue monster, but when it comes to like special abilities and weird stuff, it's really quite good at uh, enabling that sort of thing. Like I've made, I've made creatures that do some really, really weird crap. And then like the, a big thing for me then is I'm now self-aware about when I overcomplicate things. So then I look at the thing that I made and I go, I like this. Now, how do I make it good? <laughs> And sometimes uh, I turn two paragraphs into like two lines because I figure out a way to simplify it that much. Uh, because I get too into the details at times. I can almost guarantee you that's going to happen with this creature uh, because I have an idea of how I want it to work. I have not gone too deep into refining the mechanics of that idea. But it's uh it's gonna have a thing that basically fascinates you normally fascination's really weak in combat like oh somebody anybody took a hostile action against me i'm no longer fascinated but uh, these things will have a slightly stronger version of that uh which already has precedence in the system there's a i think harpies can do that they can fascinate you in battle and it takes extra juice to knock you out of it which i think is really cool because fascinated's a really good status penalty uh or status effect uh, you can only use concentrate uh actions on the thing that you're fascinated by so like you could you could cast an AOE spell, so long as it's included in the area. But, like, if you cast a spell that has the concentrate trait, and you want to hit something else because it's a bigger threat, too bad. You have one target. Uh, 13th Age is a good source for weird mechanics, too. There are red caps of forbidden words where if the players speak it, the monster disappears. The extra dimensionally drop pixie if you open the container it hit him. That's great. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, like little stuff like that is, is amazing. Uh, I, I really like messing around and, and making strange creatures. Uh, I, I also like finding creatures and either expanding or contracting their concepts to fit in the game uh like on the patreon i've got a bunch of creatures from castlevania uh, on there like i took axe armor and they became like in castlevania they can be sometimes they're a zombie and sometimes they're like a possessed armor but i went with zombie and basically gave them the ability they're bound to their axe so they can throw it and it boomerangs back to them 
Uh, and I really like taking a concept like that and finding a way to make it work mechanically and smoothly so that it's a, a fun experience. Drop, drop kicking red cat. Just <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, let's see. Blue acrobatics. Really high deception. Let's look at extreme, but lower it by four. So we're gonna go seven. Um, as far as it goes, like why I did that, why I went, okay, let's go extreme and lower it by four. Oops, I just messed that up. So, of course, extreme is the highest number generally anything should have at its level. Um, but I do like making through lines on my ability modifiers. So, moderate is uh, plus four. I have it set to zero. Uh, so extreme would reflect like a legendary training, basically, or master training with, uh, with some other benefit, but we don't even have a moderate ability score. We have a very low ability score, so um, it's good at this, uh, but because it's not, um, directly tied to its abilities to fascinate um it can it can bear to be lower but it is going to be plus 21 to your to to personate corpse Oh, I don't need to add the parentheses, it does that for me. So, they do kind of just look like a body floating along. doesn't have a lot of slams uh, that was a one-y thing but this one I think it makes sense oh we're gonna have a relatively high bonus but not a ton of damage so we're gonna go with uh, moderate damage uh, we have 2d8 plus 9 we have plus 6 strength Level 8, so plus 3 from other sources would not be unusual. Alright. Bludgeoning. But, you know. Lower this to 2d6. Yeah. So we got 18 and 22, so we can add 4 pretty safely. Or 3 would be fine, plus. 1d6 mental. And that should be an average of 19, I think. Yeah. Which is within that range pretty nicely. Mental. We do not use finesse or agile here because it's just gonna float under the air, bumping into you. Mental. Magical. Magical 
should come before mental. Letters are in order. Ads coming in two minutes when a creature sees some figure. Oh, 
for one minute. Creature. is fascinated and and fascination Concentrate. This fascination is on street action. Actually, we're gonna take this up to 17 or plus 17 or DC 27. Brain. Hello, Phoenix. How's it going? Uh, thanks for the lurk. Early by 
spending. And then oops. critical failure as a failure, except on your turn, you must spend. This is when a creature begins its. Except you must spend your first action to ride toward the bottom figure. Cannot. Blingly, blingly move further away from it unless doing so would allow you to closer. Sir, such as by overcoming a barrier. You may throw, climb, fly, or swim ahead of stride if you corresponding. Fascinated by the figure until the start of its next turn. Fascination. Does not end if hostile. They can hit us. Creature. Creature. Go. Any attempts to end this fascination? Concentrate, trait. Name a condition on a successful DC twenty seven or something. Girl, climb, fly, or swim, and some stride of it corresponding. So that's, that's sort of its core conceit there, is this ability. So you see it and you go, huh, I recognize that. And I'll probably expand on the flavorful bits of it in, in the lore part, keep the mechanical chunks simple enough. Uh, just 
do a specialty right there. Let's do. Magneto rejection. We'll add this to defense. None. Magneto rejection. When a creature. Thus, fully breaks the successfully removes the donated condition from the familiar body ability. is passive, but it should probably be an option. Where's my speed? As a fly speed of 30 feet. Swim speed of or we can do twenty five. Oh, it's level eight. We can do thirty feet. Uh, just thought of a trait to add. Amphibious. Try not to overcomplicate the senses. But we have athletics. I want them to be able to tangle you up. Sir. We get six. What would 
extreme v21 19 It doesn't hurt that they'll have a little bit of a cult system, but it should be absolutely trash because they have minus two intelligence. Uh, so we're looking at let's see eight plus two. tend to be a corpse. So they don't they don't really do the whole I'm a sneaky I'm a sneaky one. Uh, we got ads coming in in two minutes.
creature dies. something a little more active.
pushed by currents in the water, regardless of their presence. Unexpected appearance, lots of figures do not seem to move actively, always me. Always appearing to be pushed by currents in the air or water. Regardless of their presence, Flotsam figure can fly or swim, then attempts to faint a creature within reach at any point along its path. If it succeeds, it makes a slam strike against the off guard creature before completing its move. that are three actions. Talking about earlier, overcomplicating things. 
because of an idea. It comes a slam strike against the creature. This is just a once per turn thing it can do, basically. It forces it to move. To get this sort of action benefit of having doing three actions for two. Maybe do a little bit more. Let me look at paint right quick. Paint. I don't need to put the PF2E in there. This is already PF2E. Focus in melee reach for the target you're attempting to paint. So I can actually cut that out. Mm, it doesn't hurt. Deception against the perception DC. There are enemies that make this and die off. Until the end of your next turn. I, I've, I have nothing written down. I've thought about it. Um, I, I've just, you know, had my thinky thoughts about it. Uh, but I've not written it down before now. So some of these ideas I already had, like, um, Familiar body, I had that idea. Uh, infectious mind, I had that idea. Uh, unexpected currents is sort of an expansion on the base concept, uh, but not something that I expressly thought of. Uh, Blossom infection is uh, something I just came up with. Uh, Cognito rejection is something that I came up with to try and give them a little more a little more uniqueness uh i i'm really fond of something that they've done in 2e with like demons where they have really particular weaknesses um so i wanted to fold a, a special weakness to it into it which i think can actually uh, also allow me to raise its basic resistance up there so it's more resistant but you have a chance just to like take it for 10 damage basically and i think i'm gonna actually bump up its hit points a little what would adding another 14 do with the uh 62. I think that's okay. And then two more, actually. And 64. So 10. 10 base per level plus 10 uh, quote, ancestral hit points. Good resistance, but an easy to hit weakness uh, that does not require you to have spells. Let's see. Uh, relatively low damage, but persistent damage, and there is a rider effect with that damage. Uh, okay, let's do uh, mental and lots of infection. I have a I have a pretty high tendency to kind of just go into things and and make them up. I don't make a lot of like pre notes or anything. I, I'll sit around and I'll I'll conceptualize sometimes, like when I'm at work or uh, whenever the the bug hits me. Uh, and like this one was bashing around in my head about a week or two ago, and. I now have the opportunity to put it to uh, put it to pixels. Um, so, unexpected currents is a bit of action efficiency to also make it more likely to hit. But ruminating—that's oh, a good word. Uh, 
Is you, you, you chewing on it? <laughs> it's a very, very good word. Um, yeah, I, I, I ruminate a lot about a lot of things. Uh, sometimes a lot of things that don't matter much, but I do, I do enjoy making features. Uh, so. Let's see. It's got a plus 17 to faint. Um, which is decent. It's not high, but it's not moderate either. It's right in the middle. Uh, put the specifics of that details in that and floor the acrobatics athletics because they can tangle you up they can grab you uh, exception for unexpected currents and attempts to make a strike or grapple or attempts to then to grapple group or strike the creature adds da 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 adds the ads are back off i i lowered the hp back down uh because i added regeneration the sort of biggest weakness i guess of this thing is that it's it's very passive in terms of its abilities it only has one active ability uh and it's not the uh it's not very good at got a very it's got a low ac it's got a really low reflex because it moves slow it's not particularly agile whatsoever so i think adding some regen to it uh deactivated by some things that are regularly available including its own built-in weakness so you can in fact uh kill it by knocking it down and going wait a second I don't recognize you um uh, so this isn't going to be something that 
the party needs specific spells to kill, uh, it will be easier with certain spells. Anything that deals mental or force damage. Uh, and if you do happen to have just a little bit of Auric Alchem, you can bonk it in the head with it. And, and bye bye. Maybe Auric Alchem. I could remember that. Yeah. That's more of a time thing. This isn't healing through time. It's just weird. It's just a weird thing. does not want to die. It wants to make more. That's all it cares about. Let's see. How, how long are we? Not too, too long. Might be able to... Do one more thing. Let's do... Nostalgic... Whispers. until motion 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 mental One second. auditory because not actually heard echoes enter the lines of fascinated Enter the minds of fascinated creatures within 30 feet. Creature. Enter the minds of the figures. Victims. Creatures. Fascinated by a bottom figure within. But emanation 
muscle. Come a beast. save or step and at least five This lets them manipulate you into getting closer to them, even if you didn't uh, critically fail against uh, a familiar form or familiar body. almost one o'clock so I'm gonna wrap up here I'll work on some lore for this at a later date uh, but I think that's about the mechanics on it wrap it's pretty straightforward uh, I think these would be pretty nasty in a group someone to raid right what be back on tomorrow most likely around the same time 11 to 1 uh central stream manager and i appreciate everyone coming by it was good to see you hats Appreciate it. I like the harassment. <laughs> All right, let's see what we've got going on. Okay, that's what I thought I saw. 
Alright, we're gonna go raid a me mat. Start raid. Let's go. 